Tesla made a significant change to its electric motor strategy with the introduction of the Model 3, switching from an AC induction motor to a permanent magnet motor. Now, Tesla's principal motor designer, Konstantinos Laskris, explains the logic behind the move. The automaker recently confirmed that they are building an electric motor R&D group in Greece to tap into strong local electrical engineering talent. At the coil winding, insulation and electrical manufacturing exhibition, Queem, in Chicago, Laskaris made a rare comment about Tesla's decision to use a permanent magnet motor in the Model 3 instead of an AC induction motor, like in Model S and Model X. He said, it's well known that permanent magnet machines have the benefit of pre-excitation from the magnets, and therefore you have some efficiency benefit for that. Induction machines have perfect flux regulation and therefore you can optimize your efficiency. Both make sense for variable speed drive single gear transmission as the drive units of the cars. So, as you know, our Model 3 has a permanent magnet machine now. This is because for the specification of the performance and efficiency, the permanent magnet machine better solved our cost minimization function, and it was optimal for the range in performance target. Quantitatively, the difference is what drives the future of the machine, and it's a trade-off between motor cost, range and battery cost that is determining which technology will be used in the future. It sounds like the decision was driven by efficiency and costs. According to the EPA, Tesla is still far from reaching its cost target for the Model 3, but they can say mission accomplished for efficiency since the Model 3 is one of the most efficient vehicles on the market. One of the main concerns with permanent magnet motors is that they often use rare earth materials which are controversial because of health risks and geopolitical issues. But not much is known about the design of the Model 3 motor at the moment. H.A. Has there ever been a better time to launch an electric car? There is a good argument in favor with current anti-diesel semantics and to a lesser extent anti-combustion engine sentiment from the government. However concerns about range in pure electric vehicles has kept their sales to a small percentage of the UK total. With this new second generation LEAF, Nissan hopes to persuade even more drivers to switch to electric thanks to a greatly improved range capability and a host of new technology. Nissan claims the LEAF will be bought by a wide cross-section of the public, just like any other hatchback. It claims buyers aren't limited to cities and the car isn't just a second car in a household. However the majority are bought by private individuals. Nissan doesn't give exact figures for sales expectations but the previous LEAF sold 5,600 units in its best year in 2017. It's a safe assumption that the Japanese firm will want to sell more of this new model. Not only does the new Leaf have a greater range but the styling is much sleeker, although there are still a few angles where the front looks a little ungainly. The new Leaf carries the current Nissan family styling which sees the front bumper design flow into the lights and wrap into the side of the car. The side profile is distinctive with an upward kick to the window line behind the back doors. The biggest improvement is to the rear where the tailgate is now much more integrated into the overall design. But while the second generation Leaf now looks more modern and appealing than before it's under the bodywork where the biggest changes have taken place. A new motor has been installed which sees the horsepower figure rise from 109 bhp to 150 bhp. To fuel this motor Nissan has fitted more powerful batteries. 40 kilowatt hours rather than the previous car's 30 kilowatt hours. The result is a significant boost to acceleration. Few Leaf drivers will care directly about a 0 to 60 mph time but the draw from 11.5 seconds to 7.9 seconds is large and for the first time makes the Leaf feel usefully quick. Where this improvement is felt most is at speeds above 40 mph. Accelerating onto motorways and overtaking have become safer as a result. 
probably of more use to electric car buyers is the greater range. Using the same criteria as the previous car, the official range jumps from 124 miles to 235 miles. Nissan has also tested the Leaf using a newer, more real-world system that provides a range figure for mixed driving of 168 miles. On a 97-mile route cross-country when we drove the Leaf we used 75% of the car's battery, which is still a little off the claimed figure. There are cliches that apply to the way all electric cars drive and this is no exception, which means it is exceptionally quiet and has instant and significant shove when you hit the accelerator. As a regular hatchback the Leaf is now also a much more competent driving package. With this latest incarnation, Nissan engineers have spent much more time producing a car that rides and handles well. Stiffer suspension means there's less body roll than before in corners yet the ride comfort, even over poorly surfaced roads, is good enough to keep passengers insulated from any jarring bumps. The steering too has been tweaked to give a more natural feel and more driver involvement in the corners. Perhaps the biggest change to the way the car drives comes in the form of a new feature called e-pedal. Press a button to activate and it reprograms the accelerator pedal so that when you lift your right foot, the car engages a much higher level of regenerative braking than is otherwise usually available. In reality it means you can drive using only one pedal for the majority of the time. This is because pushing the accelerator makes the car go quicker, as normal, but lifting actively slows the car. This is equivalent to light braking, rather than just coasting, and will eventually bring the car to a full stop. It will even activate both the brakes and the brake lights at its most active. It takes a while to get used to and seems like the natural progression for electric cars that can feel like you're wasting energy by braking when you could be recapturing that momentum to recharge the battery. The cabin of the Leaf has also been improved too with higher quality materials and a new high-tech dash plus a new central screen for navigation and other in-car settings. That said, it's still a way off the quality and feel of the best hatchbacks. Plus there's one significant oversight by Nissan. The lack of reach adjustment to the steering wheel, something that every other car in the small family car sector offers. That omission on the steering wheel coupled with a very high driver's seat, means that taller drivers will find themselves looking out of the top portion of the windscreen and find the rearview mirror blocking vision in left-hand bends and turns. Meanwhile taller rear seat passengers will also find headroom as limited by the inwardly sloping sides to the upper half of the doors. As a positive, the boot is bigger than before at a competitive 400 liters although there is still a large lip to lift luggage over. The rear seats fold but don't form a flat floor. Alongside the battery tech and the e-pedal, Nissan has also introduced a clever cruise control system to help keep the car in a lane and slow or speed up depending on traffic and the maximum speed set by the driver. Like similar tech from premium brands Volvo and Mercedes the system will bring the car to a complete stop and then restart when traffic clears. The few negatives may be a shame but are outside the core reasons for buying the new Leaf, which are the much improved driving experience and significantly better range. Due out later this year, one of the biggest news items to come out of the auto show circuit has been the introduction of the all-new Subaru Ascent. Resting atop the new Subaru Global platform currently used by Crosstrek and Impreza, the 2019 Ascent will be the first large vehicle to use the new architecture. At first glance, there's immediate Subaru signature design cues in both the exterior grille and interior treatments. The biggest thing about the Ascent is its sheer size, it feels odd to see such a large Subaru body. But it is attractive reflecting subtle sophistication with a capable athletic stance. As dedicated as the Subaru loyal seem to be to the booming all-wheel drive brand, even their enthusiasm could not save the previously available big SUV, called the Tribeca, which went away in 2014. The Tribeca SUV was strange-looking and never had the sales impact the brand needed it to have 
providing a step-up vehicle for growing families who started without backs and foresters. Built in Lafayette, Indiana, the Ascent is exclusive to the North American market as it offers Subaru's notable reliability, legendary endurance, eight-passenger capacity, and all-wheel drive sure-footedness. The big news distinction regarding the Ascent is the potential three-row eight-passenger capacity. Entry and exit from row three, which can be challenging for any SUV design, is notable for its big space, providing simple access via sliding row two and grab handles for extra ease. According to Subaru, the grab handles on the row two seats were inspired by Japan's famously well thought out bullet train interior designs. Both the premium and limited trim levels will offer a choice of cabin configuration for rows 2 and 3. At no additional expense, Ascent owners may pick from a traditional second row bench or captain's chairs. Aside from the obvious Impreza performance exceptions, Subaru does not necessarily hang its head on high-speed performance being a requirement for its vehicles. A new 2.4-liter turbocharged flat-four engine will be paired to a CVT transmission. Subaru has had great success with these pairings and the big ascent should benefit from that success. Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system is standard equipment, and Subaru owners can relish the ability to stay on the pavement during even the worst weather environments. Inside, the 2019 Ascent will feature integration of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, while also delivering a big 8-inch touchscreen as an interface for the latest version of the Starlink infotainment system. From a safety standpoint, Subaru gets high marks and the iSight Active Safety Suite, which includes adaptive cruise control, an automatic braking system, lane keeping assist, high beam assist, and sway warning, will be at the center of the protective equipment. When the Ascent hits the market in the summer, base prices will be slightly above $30,000, with Subaru type option packages available to outfit your SUV to your heart's content. When you look at the others in the segment, as well as recognizing Subaru's success in right pricing all their vehicles with regard to competitors' pricing, expect to see an ascent that has value over the long haul.